Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So I'm back in my craft room and I'm starting to do some crafts to decorate my craft room. And I want to share with you this great idea that I came up with. So this is putting together some canvas art with sublimation. So I can't wait to show you uh, how I did this, how I came up with the idea. But before I do, thanks so much for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. I so appreciate all of my faithful followers. And hey, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. I try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So let's get going on this project and I'm gonna show you how I use sublimation and I am making some wall art for my craft room. So a couple weeks ago, I was putting together a baby blanket for a dear friend and she wanted elephants for her theme in the nursery and I could not find any fabric that had elephants on it. So what I did is I supplemented on some fabric and then I created a baby blanket. So I got to thinking, hey, if I can do that for a baby blanket, I bet I could do something on some material and create some wall art. So I love positive um, words of um, reinforcement, just positive words um, around me all the time. So I did a little cruising on Pinterest, came up with a few ideas, and I came up with creative, happy, thankful, and fearless. Really like those four words. So what I'm gonna show you today is how I was able to sublimate this design on some fabric and add it to a canvas and create this. And by the time we get done, I'll have four of them done and we'll put them up on the wall and you guys will be able to see what my wall art looks like. So how I started out is I did design my design and I've got two of them printed here. And of course they're printed backwards because they're um, printed on sublimation paper, but I created my design in Canva. I really like using Canva for my designs. Um, now, I do have a paid version of Canva. There is a free version and there's all kinds of lots of great features. So I really recommend you take a look at it um, for your designing. I also had picked up um, from Design Bundles this background, what I call of splattered paint, right? They had a sublimation package last year and I picked it up. So each one of my designs is going to have a different splash of color on it. And I just love how they're turning out so far. So create a design, print it on sublimation paper. Now I'm using a sub paper and I love my Cosmo ink. And so that's what I've used for this project. The other thing I did is I picked up some canvases. Now I've been doing lots of canvas artwork lately and now I'm using the thicker canvases. They're about an inch thick but I had a whole bunch of these thinner ones um, on hand. So I decided that I wanted to put four of them together to create my wall art. So these are 10 by 10 canvases that I'm using here, okay? So the very first thing we need to do is we need to cut out our fabric, okay? Now I picked up this fabric over at Joann's. Um, it was in the sport fabric section. Um, and it's 100% polyester. Now I went with white um, because I just think that that um, supplements um, so much clearer. The other thing I like to do is because we're going to wrap our canvas, I like to add anywhere from three to four inches um, of extra fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my scissors here. I'm gonna trim up my fabric here really quick that I had already used. Um, definitely add it to my stash and use it at, at a later time. You could definitely use a rotary cutter for this also. Um, I just happen to have my scissors handy. I've got my cutting mat and so I just like to have it so I can really eyeball 
and I'm going to give myself about three inches. That is more than enough, you guys. You guys could probably go two inches. What you want to look at is the size of your canvas and then the height of it um, um, or the depth of it, however you want to look at that. So I'm going to give it um, one, two, three inches. Three inches all the way around, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and do two, you guys, because I've got two more of these to do. Okay, so we're gonna cut out, and I'm definitely cutting excess fabric here, you guys. Um, but the very first one I did, I didn't do the excess fabric. And this material that I picked up um, really ravels easy, and boy, did I have a hard time getting, um, getting it wrapped around the canvas. To, and to be perfectly honest with you, it ended up in the garbage. So. I would definitely recommend that you give yourself a little bit of extra. Now I picked up a yard of this fabric um, and I easily am going to get my four 10 by 10s out of this. Um, um, and, and I've got room definitely to make some more canvases. So um, a yard of material is more than enough. Um, this happened to be 40% off at Joann's. And so it was regular $9.99 a yard. I think I paid $5.99 um, for it. So definitely have some great options um, for fabric, but really stick with um, the 100% polyester. That is definitely going to give you the best um, results. Okay, so I've got my two pieces cut. I've got my two canvases. Okay, I'm going to hop over to my heat press, we are going to sublimate these designs and I'm going to center them. That's going to be really key. I want to center them on my fabric. We're going to um, um, center them on, sublimate them. Now what I have found is it's really quick and easy to sublimate you guys because this is 365 degrees for 60 seconds. So within two minutes, I'm going to have both these done. We're going to pop back over staple them on these canvases and we're going to have some wall art so let's hop over to the heat press and i'll show you the next steps okay guys so we're over here at the heat press and what i like to do is i love my big roll of butcher paper that i've got right here so i've already got one piece down i am going to put my uh, material in okay and i just like to give it a quick press okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just for a couple seconds, my heat press is already up to um, temperature, okay? So I'm just gonna do like maybe five seconds, okay? Just like that. Then what I wanna do is I am gonna take my lint roller. Um, it is your best friend. You always wanna lint roll your material. And I just want you to go through and you can see this fabric just ravels really easy. Um, so you gotta be really careful with it. Okay, but I'm just trying to make sure I get any little pieces of lint off. Okay, I'm gonna put my material back on. Okay, now my press is a 15 by 15, okay? Um, and I printed on 11 by 17 um, sublimation paper, okay? You always wanna make sure your printer can handle the size of design that you need. There is methods to be able to piece together um, your designs, but in this case, this is gonna work out just good. Now, one thing that I normally do, you guys, is I normally would use heat transfer tape and tape this down, but because this material is raveling so easy, I've not been doing any heat tra uh, transfer tape on it. So I've got my butcher paper, my fabric, and my print. I'm gonna put another piece of butcher paper over, okay? And we are going to engage our press, okay? And it's as easy as that. We're gonna do 60 seconds. While that one's going, I can get the second one ready to go. I can do it a little bit out of order. I'll go ahead and um, do the lint roller on it right now so I can just get that all done. I still want to give it a good press, okay? So we'll do that and then we'll add this one on. So 
and you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see, but this material just ravels. So that is the reason why um, I'm not using the tape on it. So I'm gonna grab the other one just so you guys can see um, how pretty the colors are. This is the other one that I did and just look at how vibrant those colors are. I can't wait to get all four of them up um, on the wall. They're not gonna go on this wall. They're gonna go on the wall above my sewing machine, but I just can't wait to see what they all look like. So, okay, we've got this one done. Let's take a peek and see how it looks, okay? Now, you guys, always dispose of your paper when you're done. You guys probably can't see that, but there is a faint, design and I wouldn't want to take any chance of that going through on my next print. Um, but look at this, you guys. Look how beautiful those colors came out. Be thankful. So got that one done, okay? And so I'm gonna throw everything away on my paper. Got my garbage can nice and handy. I'm gonna grab another piece of butcher paper, okay? I'm going to put my fabric down, okay? I'm gonna grab another piece of butcher paper. And remember I said I wanted to press it. I've already done the lit roller on this one, remember? Okay, so all I'm gonna do is give this one a good press, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did on the last one, you guys, okay? I'm going to center this one up with my material, okay. I'm gonna add my top layer. I'm gonna engage my press. And I'm gonna meet you back over on my um, cutting area and we are going to put these together. There's a couple little tricks to adding the staples. Um, and so I wanna show you that, but then we'll look at the finished product. So meet me over at the cutting table. Okay, you guys, here's that next one that I did. Um, be fearless. I just, these colors, you guys are so beautiful. Okay, so let's add these to our canvases. Now I've, I've watched a couple um, other ways people have done this. And some people start out with um, a, just a frame. What I really like is having the canvas behind it because it just gives it um, a little bit more thickness. The fabric's not see-through. Um, and so you can pick these up, both Michael's and Joann's um, and even Hobby Lobby. I see buy one, get one free ads all the time. So, um, and this package actually came in a group of four. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piece and I'm gonna lay it upside down. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my canvas and I'm gonna center it, okay? So I'm kind of just peeking and making sure that I've got it nice and centered, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my staple gun and I'm gonna bring one edge over. I'm not gonna pull very hard, you guys. I'm gonna do one edge and I'm putting my staples this direction, okay? Now this edge, I am gonna pull, okay? Because I wanna get it tight, okay? And then I'm gonna do my staple. Then we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna go easy on this one, okay? And then I'm gonna pull tight on this one, okay? And you know, you guys, I was thinking this would be really fun to do a picture to, you know, you could do a, uh, a um, you know, a picture of maybe a grandbaby. I know my son got married this summer. I was thinking this would be a really fun project um, to do with one of the wedding pictures. Wouldn't that just be a great idea? Um, so I haven't tried a photo yet. Maybe we'll have to do another tutorial with a photo, but I'll tell you with these vibrant colors, they sure come out beautiful. Okay, so I'm doing, I do opposite sides at a time, you guys, okay? And I'm just pulling it with my hands. Now, I have also seen people using um, tool 
tools that you can pull with. Um, since I am using the canvas already, I have not seen a need for that, okay? So I'm gonna do this one again. And the other thing you can do, you guys, is you can have a hammer handy. If your staples don't take, um, go in really good, um, you can um, have a hammer and hammer them in the rest of the way. And then the corners are the last piece and that's just a little tricky. Okay, so what I have now is kind of hard to see, but I've got it on all four. And if I turn it over, you will see that I've got Be Fearless, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is now I'm going to, I want hospital corners, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm pinching this, okay? And I'm going to lay it the opposite way I'm gonna pull the corner, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I've got my hospital corner, okay? And I've got that corner right like that. And then I'm going to staple there, okay? So I'm gonna pinch, pinch my corners. I'm gonna go the opposite way that I'm going to lay my corner, okay? And then I'm gonna pull my corner over. And this just takes a little bit of playing, you guys, those corners, okay? You can kind of see, I've got those hospital corners like that, okay? And then I want to do the other side exactly the same way, okay? So I've got my hospital corners on the side, so I want to do the same thing, okay? Hospital corner on the side again. So I want to go the opposite direction and then I pull it. Okay. So there we have it. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to trim it up. And you don't have to do this, you guys. I like to do it just to trim up the back a little bit. Plus, when it's hanging on the wall, you don't have all the excess, okay? And I could have done this as I was doing um, the corners, excuse me, as I was doing each side. Um, so whichever works best for you guys, okay? But I'm just trying to get some of that bulk out of here. So I'm just trimming away. Okay, number two is done. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly do the last one. We're gonna go through the exact same steps. In fact, I'll probably just fast forward this one through for you guys, but I will go ahead and let you see me put together this one again. designs that I am going to go hang up on the wall. So before I do that, there's a couple different things that you can do for hanging, okay? So you could put some um, D-rings in here and do it, but these are so lightweight, so I'm actually going to use command strips. So I'm going to put some command strips on here, and then I'm going to go put them on the wall over there. So I will show you as soon as I put these up on the wall. 
Thanks so much for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. I hope you like this project, sublimating on fabric to create some wall art. And here is that finished wall art. I just love how it turned out. Look at each one of those just vibrant, vibrant colors. And I'll tell you, my whole craft room has got so much white in it that this splash of color I just absolutely love. So I hope you enjoyed this Inspiration Friday project. And if you're looking for other DIY type projects, make sure you check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com for other projects. Until next week, be creative, be thankful, be fearless, and be happy.